Hello and welcome to this morning's service on a day dedicated to remembering homeless people and prisoners. My name's Leslie Parsons and along with John Harris, we'll hope to lead you in a service of reflection and worship. Let's begin with a short prayer. Loving God, friend of the outcast and the persecuted, bringer of comfort and freedom, be with us as we come together as your people to bring you our thanks and praise. Help us as we consider the difficulties faced by those who have no home, to put aside questions of cause and to be generous in our hope to show your love through actions, through funds and through prayer. Help us to set aside our prejudices as we consider those who have had freedom taken from them, the prisoners of conscience locked away for expressing political opinions or social awareness, the offender who has taken the wrong path and is now facing a complete change of existence, which may affect their whole lives. And the repeat offender, especially those who find prison an escape from the harsher realities of life. Help us in our daily living to constantly consider the needs of those that we would rather not see. To hear the opinions of those we cannot agree with. And to forgive any who have caused us individual distress. As you would see them, hear them, and continue to forgive, just as you see, hear, and forgive us. In Christ's name, Amen. Our first hymn is The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy. about inclusion and being an inclusive society but what must it feel like to be excluded an outsider or unwanted when i started my first year in the local boys grammar school i was very conscious of the fact that i was one of if not the shortest boy in the whole school so as i approached my second year at the same school, I looked forward to the day when I would no longer hold claim to this undesirable title. Alas, when the day arrived and all the new Form 1ers walked through the school gates, my hopes were dashed when it appeared to me that every single one of the 150 or so new entrants were taller than me. 
this in itself was not so terrible. And even as I say this, now you might detect just a hint of pride that I held claim to the title of the shortest boy in the school until I entered my third year, by which time I had grown an inch or two. Where is the feeling of exclusion in this, you may ask? Well, the problem, problem arose when it came to choosing rugby teams in our gym lessons. Just imagine a class of 40 or so boys lining up in a row, two team captains being chosen, and they then, in turn, choosing another 14 boys each to make up their teams. Did I ever get chosen? Of course not. I was always just one of the leftovers, who indeed were left to look after ourselves, to entertain ourselves, whilst the 30 fittest boys were able to enjoy a proper game of rugby under the supervision of the gym master. You can imagine what fun we leftovers had standing around unenthusiastically, often in the cold wind and rain of the day. That's certainly one experience of being excluded that I have not forgotten. And of course, there have been others. We may all have experienced occasions when we have felt excluded or like an outsider, disliked, unwanted, of no value, unheard or unloved. Being or feeling excluded is a most unpleasant and most undesirable place to be. In today's New Testament lesson, we read about some people who found themselves in a place where they were most certainly excluded from the whole of society. The reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Leslie will read that for us now. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, Get up. And go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Today, leprosy still exists, but thankfully, there have been advances in medicine, including the use of antibiotics, which have made it a curable disease, especially if it is treated early. It is hoped, with continued advance in medical science, that transmission of one of the world's oldest diseases will be ended by the year 2035. It was very different in ancient times. Those who were perceived to have leprosy in the regions where the Bible was written were considered the lowest in society. They faced rejection and were beggars who lived on the side of the road. They were excluded from their families, from their friends, and indeed from the whole of society in general. In the passage we read today, how did Jesus respond to their plea for help? Well, just imagine the scene. Ten dishevelled people disfigured by the horror disease that leprosy was, dirty, in pain, desperate for help. They come to Jesus, begging for mercy. He didn't turn away from them. He didn't say, keep away from me and my friends lest we too catch the disease. He didn't make any conditions such as 
If you follow me, I promise you will be healed. No, he saw their need. He heard their plea for mercy and he responded in love. Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they went and were made clean. Are we able to follow Jesus' example when we are challenged by the needs of those who feel excluded from our society and in our world today? Did you notice the description of the one who returned to Jesus to say thank you for his healing? He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. There were long-standing rifts between Jews and Samaritans. They really didn't get on well together. So it's likely that this poor man, excluded from society by his illness, had also been excluded within the group of his fellow sufferers with whom he lived his life. Yet Jesus responded to his plea for mercy just as he had to the other nine. He did not dif differentiate between these people, all of whom were desperate to receive healing. He responded, as always, with unconditional love. The challenge we have to follow Jesus is great, but as individuals and in our churches, there is much we can do to demonstrate Christ's love for all people. Let's not turn away from those who are in need. We can show compassion and we can point them in the direction of Christ's all-encompassing love for them. Let's do that. Our second hymn is For the Healing of the Nations. prayers for ourselves and others. God of love, we bring to you our concerns about the world today and ask your blessing on us as we try to live lives which reflect you in our everyday relationship with others. We thank you for the many gifts that you have given us, for the opportunities we can enjoy, for the people and things which bring us joy. 
We thank you also that we can turn to you in more difficult times, and that although we may not always get the answer we demand or expect, that our prayers will be answered. We raise to you this morning the homeless and the outcast. We ask you to bless refugees and displaced people everywhere who are fleeing war or violence, discrimination or political oppression, famine, flood or disease. Help us, Lord, to influence political leaders to show ourselves to be an open, welcoming society, ready to share what we have whether material things or freedom. We raise to you those who are imprisoned, physically, politically or spiritually. We ask that we can work toward building societies where people are not so alienated as to consider crime as an answer or a lifestyle. Where people repent or try to change, Lord, help us to accept without prejudice, to enable without judgment, and to embrace all as your people, and so as our brothers and sisters. Help us, Lord, to build a world where justice prevails, where people are allowed to think and speak and act differently in safety. We bring to you thoughts of our friends and neighbours and ask that you will bless all who are ill or who struggle with life. We ask you to bless the dying and the bereaved so that they may know your comfort. And we ask you to be in any troubling situations we can bring to mind this morning so that we can know the hope of your unending love. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now let us share the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we come to our final hymn, which is Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You.
share the grace together. May the grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.